Yes, sir, by gum, by cracky, with his one good ear all mangled and grody, Freddy managed to leap from the schoolhouse just seconds before it went up in the biggest conflagration course gold had ever seen. The truth came out about Penelope and how she'd been plotting to buy up all the oil rights. There was no earthly way she could have survived the blast. Still, it were curious how they never recovered her body. Sheriff Ship and P.H. Balance were run out of town on a rail. The townsfolks leased the oil rights to some big developers. Soon everybody was rolling in dough, sprucing up the town and revitalizing course gold. Me? I eventually found my whittling knife, all gunked up. I don't remember dropping it. I must have had a spell of stupidity or something. And as for Freddy, well, he made himself another couple of silver prosthesii. One to replace the ear that Kenny just shot off, and one to replace the silver ear that ended up fatally lodged in Kenny's neck. What with all the fuss, Freddy was able to keep his gunslinging identity a secret. And it were a good thing, too, cause Freddy's adventures was far from over. But that little nipper is another story. Now get off my lap. You're starting to compact my vitals. Now the whole town still remembers how the old school house was blown to embers, though Miss Prim's body was never ever found. Since the sheriff and the banker made the folks of course gold red with anger, they tarred and feathered and ran them out of town. And Serene, he became an ordinary wreck, salty peace shaman down on the Pecos where engine hearts still burn. While the townsfolk safe from danger Talk about that silver earlobe stranger Where did he come from And when will he return Farkas Freddy Farkas Black gold fields were his legacy Freddy Farkas Freddy Farkas Peerless Earless and free. 